Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Chi Wu from Yichi. First of all, I would like to thank the organization committee for inviting me here to deliver a speech. The title of my talk today is A New Era of Compound Semiconductors, Opportunities and the Challenges. And in this presentation, I will also talk about the research status at Yichi. So this is the outline of my talk. First, let's talk about compound semiconductors. The mainstream semiconductors, silicon, germanium, they are not compound semiconductor. And the, traditionally, when we talk about compound semiconductors, people think about gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, and the silicon germanium. They are the material for like line emitting diodes, high speed electronics. But for the past 15, 20 years, there are new generation of semiconductor, compound semiconductor, gallium nitride and the silicon carbide. So those materials are good for line emitting diodes, high speed electronics, and also high power and high temperature electronics. If if you look at the table at the bottom side here, for silicon, the band gap is 1.1 electron volt. And for compound semiconductor, the traditional compound semiconductor, like a gallium arsenide and the indium phosphide, the band gap also like a one point something electron volt. And also the gallium arsenide and the indium phosphide, they can deliver higher mobility, you know, up to close to 10,000 cm square per volt second. But because of their band gap is relatively small. So the breakdown field here, if you look at the breakdown field here, it's relatively small. So if you want to make the high power electronics or high temperature electronics, you need to look for materials which have a larger band gap. So silicon carbide and the gallium nitride is the best candidates. The silicon carbide the band gap is 3.2 electron volt and the gallium nitride is 3.4 electron volt. So they can sustain much higher breakdown field. So that's why when we talk about power electronics, people always use gallium nitride and the silicon carbide. So now let's look at the market trend of the compound semiconductors. So this is the global trend of gallium, uh, uh, compound semiconductor. In this presentation, we will focus on gallium nitride and the silicon carbide. So the right hand side here is this the estimate growth of the gallium nitride and the silicon carbide, the, the power electronics, so-called power electronics. So if you know the estimated growth of the power electronics will be over 1 billion US dollar this year, 2021. So for the next few years, the compound annual growth rate is estimated about 20%. And the application include hybrid and the electric vehicle, power supplies, and the photovoltaics. So now let's look at the compound semiconductor industry in Taiwan. So in Taiwan, we already have silicon carbide and the gallium nitride industry. But if you look at the supply chain, the silicon carbide supply chain actually is not fully established yet. So from the pow powder, substrate, epitaxy, device fabrication, chip design, assembly, and the systems, if you look at the supply chain, in each area, only very few companies working on each area. And the gallium nitride supply chain is relatively more populated because of the 5G, RF data, and the data center. They are the mainstream application for the gallium nitride supply chain. I will talk about gallium nitride in the later part of my presentation. So if you look at the supply chain from substrate, epitaxy, device fabrication, chip design, assembly, and the system, 
there are more company working on garlic nitride area. So in compound semiconductor industry in Taiwan, silicon carbide supply chain is, is not that fully established. Garlic nitride is better. So as the research institute, you know, for, for E3, so E3 is trying to help the Taiwan's industry to develop the compound semiconductor supply chain. So now I will talk about the E3's strengths and the pain on this field. So first I will talk about the silicon carbide electronic and power electronics for power electronics. And uh, for the last five or 10 minutes of my talk, I will also talk about the gallium nitride for the wireless or high frequency application. So let's talk about silicon carbide first. So this is the roadmap for power electronic. So the X axis is the voltage, the Y axis is the current. So for the application below 800 volt, so the current power electronics such as silicon MOSFET, silicon IGBT, and the gallium nitride, probably enough for the, the low, no, relatively low voltage application, such as e-bike, the consumer electronic like an air conditioner, the e-scooter, and uh, for higher current such as 48 volt, no, hybrid electric car. Now, the gallium, uh, silicon IGPT and gallium nitride are probably enough for those applications. But if you want to go to higher voltage, the application for higher voltage beyond 800 volt, like a servo motor, no, servo motor, no, and the EV car, electric bus, and the eventually the new re renewable energy power plant. So, those applications, you probably need a high voltage <clears throat> power electronics beyond 1000 volt. So for the traditional power electronics like IGBT and the silicon MOSFET, probably cannot sustain the high voltage. So for the application beyond 1000 volt, so we need to use the gallium nitride and silicon carbide, and eventually probably we'll have to go to like a gallium oxide. So we start our overall strategy at E3. So we try to integrate the supply chain to develop the proper application in Taiwan. So we will try to help or work with the industry, the local industry to build up the material growth, device design, and the testing capability. This can provide valuable service to our local companies and promote collaboration in the supply chain. So the main items need to be developers. Now we will develop the inga growth, especially on silicon, in silicon carbide inga growth, device design, equipment, and the material quality assessment. So following the, the guideline in the previous slides, so each we will engage in several critical area of semiconductor, com uh, compound semiconductor power electronics. We will work on both silicon carbide and the gallium nitride. And the gallium silicon carbide mainly for power electronics and gallium nitride for high frequency and high power electronics. So we will set up a roadmap and we will develop the following no, technologies. We will develop materials for power device in the module package. And then we will also work on the device design and the fabrication. And the module design and also module design and the fabrication. And then we will test the, we will have a facility for module reliability. We all know that reliability is a very you know, important issue for power electronics. And then we will set up an industrial service and collaboration. So we will start with the compound semiconductor material growth. So the current supply for silicon carbide epitaxial grows great wafers in highly demand. And we all know that silicon carbide is one of the hardest material on earth. So it's very difficult to cut and polish. And because of its you no know, high you no know, 
you know, melting point. So we need to have a high temperature and the specific condition for its ingot growth. And the, in each year, our material and the chemical engineering laboratories will be work will be working on the, these areas. So we'll work you now start with the silicon carbide powder purification. And uh, this we will work with the China Steel Company, our you no, know, the local company in, in Kaohsiung. And uh, they have a very pure carbon source. So we will you no, know, we will start with silicon carbide powder you no know, purification. And uh, we will set up our equipment you no know, in material and the chemical engineering laboratories at E3 for silicon carbide inca growth. And uh, also for silicon carbide, uh, silicon carbide inca process. And as I mentioned before, the silicon carbide is the harness is you no know, probably is not one of the hardest material in the world. So it's quite difficult to slice and dice and the polish. So we we will set up the the, the slice in the facility and we probably will use laser to slice the silicon carbide. So we'll set up, we have a laser center at E3 and we are working on the using laser to to cut the silicon carbide ingot. And then we will we'll also set up the facility for silicon carbide wafer lapping and the polishing. And we will develop our own silicon carbide epitaxy and then the inspection. So we have to have a, some, some inspection tool to you know, kind of you know, inspect the, the defect of the silicon carbide wafer. So our MCL, the material and the chemical engineering laboratories at E3 were working on these areas. So in and the in device and the module area, my laboratories, EOSL, we're working on the device and the module areas. So the, nowadays in electric vehicles, the power density you know, now is around 13 kilo, kilo, kilowatt per liter. So in the next five years, it will increase to close to 100 kilowatts per liter. And then the battery system you know, will also be upgraded to more than 800 volt in the near future. And then the next platform will be you no know, 1700 volt. So to work on this area, so it's good to start with 800 volt and all the way to 1700 volt and eventually uh, 3300 volt. So to work on the, those areas, so the following innovation is needed. So we need to have a good device performance. The efficiency per uh, no, area need to be increased. So we need to have a vertical structure of the device to kind of reduce the surface area. And we need to have a device which can sustain up to 1700 volt and eventually to 3300 volt. And we, we also need to work on the device yield. And we have to set up the key intellectual property. And the, the, one of the most important things is that we have to optimize the module package and the, the package circuitry design. So let's look at the module requirements for the for the power electronics. This is the US Department of Energy target for electric vehicles. So for electric vehicle, there are four important parts which need the power electronics. The EV motor, the DC DC converter, the onboard charger, and the charging station. So for EV motor, the cost the dollar per kilowatt nowadays probably around five dollar per kilowatt in next four or five years it has to reduce to about three dollar per kilowatt and the same trend for dc dc converter and the onboard charger and then the most important thing is the power density so for the ev motor to have no the power density need to be increased about 10 times in the next five years, from currently around 5.7 kilowatt per liter to about 50 kilowatt per liter. And in DC-DC converter and the onboard charger, the power density also need to be increased. So all this, we need to have a higher efficiency power electronics. So 
With that, our each is the target for device and the module is following. So for device targets, we'll start with the you know, 1.7 kilowatt power device. We need to reduce the R arm by 25%. And for step two, we need to build up our own power module and we have to reduce the volume by 30%. And eventually we have to deliver the products for the industry. And from inverter, DC DC converter, onboard charger, and the DC charging station. All these area, we are working with our local industry to deliver these products. So for the module targets, we have to extend our device R&D capability into the commercial product. We will use both gallium nitride and the silicon carbide power device to build a compatible module and suitable for electric vehicles. So our module target, as I mentioned in the previous slide, our module target for inverter is 100 kilowatt per liter. DC-DC converter, for DC-DC converter, our target is 4.6 kilowatt per liter. No, increased by close three times, no, with our current results. And then for the onboard charger, we need to increase you know, from the nowadays you know, 0.6 kilowatt per liter to 4.6 kilowatt per liter. And the for DC charging station, which is probably is a very good business in the future once the, the electric vehicle is more populated. So for the DC charging station, the current status is probably around 180 kilowatts. So our target is to provide 50 to 200 kilowatts DC charging station. So we'll combine our you know, technology with our local industry, especially in southern Taiwan. In southern Taiwan, there are a lot of local industry which have very strong connection to the tier one, the you know, international tier one power, you no, know, no, automobile, auto, you no, know, electronic supply chain. So we'll work with them to penetrate our EV park market. So our current status at E3 for silicon carbide module research, we have a silicon PIM, silicon carbide PIM power integrated module assembly technology, which already successfully transferred to the domestic company and the targeting for mass production in the next years. We also provide the prototype 12 kilovolt servo motor driver which show 50% reduction of power loss and the 20% of power saving for industrial application. We also develop a motor you know, driver, motor driver, which integrates silicon carbide PIM, as I mentioned before, and the control IC you know, to, invent, to enhance the overall performance. So our silicon carbide module, you no, know, we, we already work with our local company to provide a servo motor driver and the follow factory machine. And the for the less power requirement, we also have a gallium nitride module, which you know, you know, have less power requirements for some application with less power requirement. We provide the embedded die packaging no, under development for both the silicon MOSFET and the gallium nitride EHEM devices. And then we also provide the gallium nitride based bidirectional you know, DC DC converter. And then we also have a 48 volt BSG motor drive driver and applying the power system in packaging, which we work with tier one automotive and the PCB players in local industry. So our gallium nitride module now can you know, can provide the industry for as a DC-DC converter and which can be used in 48 volts, the hybrid you know, electric vehicle. So at E3, we will also you know, combine our you know, strength in the ICT, like an AI you know, capability, with the power electronics. 
So we set up a very high accuracy AI design platform for power development, power electronic development. So we combine our, you know, the previous knowledge database at e -Tree. So we already developed a 95% accuracy platform, which you know, when we designed the, the power you know, electronics. And uh, those database, including various parts in each module, like a case, molding, device, and the wire bonding. So with this high accuracy AI added design platform, we can design a more accurate and the more reliable power electronics. So at e we also build up a pilot line for power module ODM. We can customize power module for ODM service. We have a, the pilot line which include die attach, interconnect, and the modulization. So we can provide a, a small amount of a pilot production and uh, which can serve the local company or international company. So we, we also build up our own testing service. We already have an AQG 324 testing no, measurement service. So which can provide an electrical performance measurement and the reliability testing. So with all this service, we have a, the service or the, the research activity all the way from the device module testing and the pilot line service. And next, I will switch gear to the high frequency. So we work on garlic nitride for beyond 5G applications. So the E-Tree's effort on no, I for high frequency uh, application, we mainly choose garlic nitride as our you know, material to work from. And the, if you look at the left hand side here, now if you compare the compound semiconductor, garlic marcinite, silicon carbide, and the garlic nitride. Garlic marcinite is in red, the red line here. Garlic marcinite is more suitable for high frequency, no, electronic because they are high uh, electromobility. Silicon carbide, on the other hand, is more you know, suitable for high power electronics because they are you know, excellent thermal conductivities in the high breakdown voltage. But if you need a material or if you need the electronics which can work on high frequency and also deliver power, like the power amplifier, in the you know, like a 5G or, or 6G basement, carbon nitride probably is the best material which can both provide or both de deliver both high voltage and high frequency. So if you look in the right hand side here, so for the garlic mass line, which can deliver very high frequency, but they you know because of the smaller band gap by you know, of the garlic mass arsenide. The garlic arsenide material is not good for deliver power. Silicon carbide is good for power device, but the color frequency is quite low, so it's not good for the high frequency you know, application. So for the power amplifier for the 5G and the beyond 5G application, which need both power and the frequency, high frequency, Garlic nitride probably is the best candidate, and that's you know, where the e is working on. So this is the international benchmark for Garlic nitride high frequency devices. So nowadays, like Intel two years ago in IEDM, they show the Garlic nitride silicon, which can deliver the you know, F max up to 300 gigahertz. So. We already at e you no. Know, we set up a goal in the next few years. We need to you know, deliver. We, we need to work on the, the, the high frequency device. We hope to deliver the you know, HAM device or make the HAM device, which can deliver the F max more than 400 gigahertz. And uh, with that device, we can make the high frequency power amplify for the 5G and the beyond applications. 
So for the high frequency application, we have a no in our program, we have a four parts. First, we have an epitaxy fab. We'll work on the eight inch epitax wafer directly on silicon. And uh, we know now the industry have a gallium nitrogen silicon combine for four inch and six inch. Also gallium nitrogen silicon for six inch. And uh, we, we at each we will work on gallium nitrogen silicon epitaxial growth at eight inch wafer. And uh, at each we already work on epitaxy for many, many years. So we have quite, we are quite experienced in in the in the gallium nitride epitaxy. So we have an eight inch wafer lab at each tree. So we were using this eight, eight inch wafer epitaxy wafer to make the you know, high frequency device on eight inch wafer. So it's you no, know, we were you no know, develop the develop the CMOS compatible process with you know, such as lithography, edge, thin film, anneal, which is the standard. All of them are standard CMOS compatible process. And uh, as I mentioned before, we have a very good advanced you know, packaging fab, and uh, we will integrate the, the, the packaging and the, the antenna and uh, the, all the, you know, electronic, the IC and the power, um, power electronics into the same package. So we are now in the package side, we have a both inch and a 12 inch wafer level process. And we also know in the past three, four years, we built up a very you know, state of our, a very good state of our subterrace lab testing system. Then we we can test the antenna up to 170 gigahertz, and we can have a material measurement you know, also up from, all the way from a few gigahertz to 140 gigahertz. Those are essential you know, lab testing equipment for the high frequency electronic development. So this is the each is you know, sub terahertz lab. So in, in this lab we can have a no, active and passive testing platform. As I mentioned, we can test the, the active and the passive device all the way to 100, no, 110 or 170 gigahertz. And uh, for the dielectric material characterization, we can test the, the high frequency material all the way from one gigahertz to 170 gigahertz. And uh, we also have a very you know, two state of art antenna chambers and the, which can measure the antenna, the the, the frequency and the, the waveform of the antenna. And the, we also have a plan to upgrade our you know, the high, high frequency you know, uh, measurement or testing lab from now is 100 something gigahertz to 300 gigahertz for our you know, high frequency or sub terahertz program for 5G and the beyond 5G, 6G applications. Finally, is my conclusion. We all know the rise of new generation in 5G and the AOT era brings the demand for new device suitable for high power, high temperature, and the high speed in, no, environment. And uh, the new generation compound semiconductor gallium nitride and the silicon carbide are the best candidate for these applications. However, there are still many challenges remains in specific application. And at E3, we set up a program to try to overcome those challenges, try to develop te technology related to material growth, device verification, and the module packaging. And we will also work with our local in industry, especially for those industry in southern Taiwan, and uh, to develop a program and uh, to boost our next stage, the, the power electronic in southern Taiwan, and to boost the next stage, the economic growth. With that, I thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.